Okay, now uh, school nurses have been told by the government that they must start sending home letters to the parents of the 33% of British school children who are overweight. However, they've been ordered not to use words such as obese and ins should instead use terms such as overweight or very overweight to avoid upsetting the kids and parents. But when it comes to the uh, health of Britain's next generation, should we be pussyfooting around or should we use direct language like obese or even fat to send a more direct message? Do you think that would shock parents into taking action? Well, and we're so PC in this country, it just gets on my nerves. It really, really does. But saying that, if you think for one minute that an, an overweight kid, you see, I can't even say it now. It's really difficult, isn't it? Because we're so drummed into it. If you think for one minute that a, a fat kid is not getting called fat in the playground, then you'll be mistaken because kids are the cruelest people that I know of. Yeah, they are at school. Mm. You know, so I don't think it's going to be that bad. You know, it is, we have a big problem in this country. And if it's shock tactics that we need, then we're going to have to do it. But what's confusing, though, is that. Why are the schools having to do this? You know, mm. and, and what is the point, really, in writing to parents to say your child is dangerously overweight and their health is in danger? I mean, don't they know? Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, how did they get there in the first place? This is the problem. Mm. And it's not, you know, it's just not the school's responsibility to be, you know, telling parents, you know, what they should be doing with their kids' health. And it's strange, you know, I, when I was at school, I just don't, I don't remember there being any overweight kids there. Oh, there wasn't my school. There, well, there, there always have been. Maybe not to the Maybe. extent that there but is I think now. There's but a lot of <laughs> well, people used to walk to school. You know, kids yeah. used to go out and play, but, you know, parents are really overprotective mm. now, and mm. they drive them to school, they don't let them go out and play, run yeah, around but the park. I think, it's, it's I mean, got I, a lot to do with it. Yeah, I mean, going back to what you were saying at the beginning there, uh, the, you know, I think it's very difficult to send, I don't think you can send a letter home to anybody and especially to the child saying you're fat, I don't think that's going to help anybody, no, no and especially the child. The child. Yeah. I mean, the child's probably already got self-esteem issues anyway. Mm. You know, so going, oh, you're fat, do something about it, is not going to cure mm. the problem. I think what it needs is, it's funny that when you have a baby and for the first two or three years of its life, you have a health visitor that constantly comes round, teaches you how to, you know, shows Did you how to you? put nappies on and how you bath them when they're first born. But nobody actually comes round to these people, and let's be honest, I know we all say, well, it's obvious the children are obese, but a lot of the times, you know, a lot of the times when you see the parents, the parents are as well, so the whole family isn't on a great eating, healthy eating scheme. So why not have the health visitor come around and not just show you how to change mm. nappies, but sit down and talk about the healthy eating scheme and come around and check that they're, you know, managing to do it. And mm. some people just don't know. Some people are lazy, you know, because it's easier to go out and buy a bag of chips than it is to and cook a healthy well, meal. Th 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 uh, what I don't understand is you can't switch on the TV for the, at the moment for cookery programs. No. You can't open a magazine for, you know, Recipes. advice on, ha on how to Diets, lose weight. Yeah. You know, you've got the, the summertime diet. You've got the winter diet. Th there is so much information out there. I mean, if anything, you know, there's, there's stuff in the papers saying you're putting too much pressure on women to be slim and all. Well, it's obviously not getting through. Mm -hmm. And what I don't understand, if there's though. so much information out there, it, it doesn't cost anything to, yeah. you know, have a look through a magazine, flick on to television, yeah, but have you know a look what? on Kids the Kids aren't that simple. I mean, no. I'm, I'm really, not talking about kids, I'm, I'm talking really, about the parents. Yeah, but even with the parents who are trying to sort their kids out, you know, I'm very lucky in a, in a way that Kira is skinny, if anything, mm -hmm. because she's not the greatest eater on the planet. And I have tried everything, and bar literally holding her down and force feeding her, mm. you know, I'm not going to get a carrot into her. It has to be a chicken nugget. Mm -hmm. But surely you, you can, know, you can lead. <laughs> and what else can I do? You, you can know, lead, I've tried. You can it's it's just so easy to go. Yeah, but I do. I'm. I eat really healthy stuff, and I go, come on, Kerry, look, this is really good for us. And she does all the exercise with me. She loves exercising and all. Of that. I don't force her. She just loves joining in, and she's very active. But as far as the food goes, I do understand why some parents go, like, Kira would probably eat better for you than she would for me, because I'm sure. a mum. And kids always, you know, I'm much better at giving advice to other people's kids and making it work than I am with my do own. What if she just wanted to eat crisps all day, would you let her? If that was all she ate and that's all she wanted to eat, would you let her eat crisps all day? No, I wouldn't want her to eat crisps all day, but what I'm saying is, and, I've, and I wouldn't let her, but I'd, I'd probably take her to the doctor and go, I can't make her eat anything else. How do you mm. forcibly make a kid eat something it doesn't well, want to eat? I just think eat. you don't get them into bad habits in the first place. I mean, mm. it, I know I haven't got kids, and I, I, I do know how difficult it is. My, my niece, for instance, didn't eat anything except potatoes until she was about 22. You know, that's, that's the honest truth. And, you know, she's fine, she's healthy, she eats, you know, everything now. But, you know, and I know, but 
I, I just think it, if you don't give them sweet things and salty things to start with, they're not going to get a taste for it. And you I, try I, and walk down the high street, though. You've got McDonald's, you've got Burger King, you've got KFC. We never had them when we were growing up. We no. never did. We had a local cafe if no, we, we were lucky. We had the rumpy bar. Yeah. The rumpy bar and the wimpy bar. There's so bar. many fast foods now. There's so much temptation out there for kids as well. And parents, if you've got a nagging child that's going, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Yeah, you do say now. But I also think the problem is as well, we also have the computer age now as well, where the kids are eating what they want and then sitting for six hours in front of a console. And, you know, that's another option where you've got to stop them doing that. And at least if they're going to eat, you know, some, you know, the majority of the day they're not eating great things for them, then at least get them out there mm. but th and do it with them, you know. At the end of the day, being a parent is really hard work and it's, it's thankless and uh, you, won't get, you won't get any thanks no. for it when you are being the one saying, right, all these crisps, they're going in the bin, we are not having these anymore as a family because there's no point picking on, you know, if one of your children is heavier than the other saying, right, you can have crisps but you can't. Mm. Um, you know, to lead by example, and it, it is easier to let them sit in front of the computer and to be honest, sometimes you are tired and can't be bothered but... You just have to get on you with have it. To do it yeah. You have to find something that keeps you busy home from as a family. school isn't going to do it. I mean, no. I would, I, you know, I'd think, how dare you, mm. you know, send me a letter home saying my kid's fat. Have you looked in the mirror? Yeah. You know. You know what I mean? You would though, wouldn't you? You'd go, exactly. my kid could lose yeah. weight. What are you going to do about your face, just, Mrs. Just Jones? <laughs> <laughs> just, you would though. Just one quick thing. I know that doctors have said, I am sure there is a genetic makeup because I've seen so many families where the daughter looks like the mother, the son looks like, and they are bigger than the, the other partner. And I'm sorry, but there's got to be a genetic makeup. Not everybody is born slim and not everybody yeah, can, but you, you know. You can be big but healthy, Jane. I think mm. that's the difference. No one's saying that you have to be slim, but you can mm. be bigger and very, very healthy. There, there, I think there is a difference mm. between the two. Okay. Time for